Bay Area Hardcore. If there's one thing I really excel at above all others, it's starting Axe video projects and not finishing them. I have a pile of them here. Uh, some of these are updates, actually, but most, a lot of projects I started and I just haven't finished. Um, sincerely, I apologize for that. It's a combination of shifting priorities, lack of energy, and just my own personality being pulled in a lot of directions all the time. That aspect of me is actually valuable, but it's also got its, you know, downside. So yeah, my apologies for that, and I will try to tie up some of these projects by uh, maybe this winter or something. This is a little Swedish Superbanko hatchet that I was going to modify and change up a little bit and just make it into the hatchet that I want it to be. I mean, that was the point of the video. It's like, I haven't done nearly as much on hatchets as I want to do, and, you know, there's a lot of things I don't know like where I don't know what I want out of a hatchet. Okay, I'm not, you know, and, and in general with axes and hatchets and everything, you know, don't mistake me for an expert or someone that passes himself off as an expert. You'll rarely hear me say expert at all. I try to avoid it. Um, I don't really think it's a good way to think. Like, let's say with, with uh, hatchets, for instance, um, there's a bunch of stuff I know I don't like and there's certain things where I feel like I've come to a place where something works for me and I want I know I want that but if someone passed me tasked me to produce a hatchet let's say someone was like oh my god Stephen Edholm has 12,000 subscribers he knows what he's talking about and people are listening to him let's do a Stephen Edholm signature hatchet I would not accept that lightly that ta that responsibility i would be like if i if someone did that i would be like okay well th this means that you're gonna send me prototypes for like at least a year you know r d like time development time at least a year of sending prototypes back and forth in extensive testing probably more like a couple of years is what i would guess that's why i'd rather just have my own forge and do and do the work myself Someone was giving me crap on one of my videos for, you know, saying that I was better than all the other YouTube, you know, and eBay reviewers because I've had this review on this hatchet. And I'm like, no, I just, you know, period. I have more time served and, you know, time thinking about and using and range of experience with hatchets than most people have. It's just not that commonly used a tool. I've just, for, for whatever reason, you know, it's like a lifestyle thing for me. I spent a lot of time with a hatchet, but that doesn't mean that I have it all figured out, far from it. My point being that in my current evolution of what I feel like a multi-use belt hatchet should be okay now I have I'm coming also from a specific place you know I'm not talking about something that I'm keeping in my car under the seat to go car camping and split some kindling I'm talking about a versatile belt hatchet I want it to be a certain weight I want it to be a certain length you know there's things I want out of it so in my current evolution of that hatchet that's kind of what I was this was going to be kind of along those lines basically and and a little bit of an experiment at the same time so more or less I was going to give it this treatment this is a hatchet that I bought for five bucks at a junk sale. Oh, by the way, a lot of people have asked me about this sheath, and it, it is wood, it's oak. I made this in about an hour one evening as an experiment, and it used to have like a, it was all one piece, and it had like a wooden clip here that snapped onto the back, and that eventually broke. And it, it was just an experiment. It was like a quick experiment to get my feet wet and start uh, thinking along these lines. But it's pretty neat. I just added some thongs to tie it. Um, there's other possibilities too. Hope to get back to that general idea in the future. But basically I was going to give this hatchet uh, similar to this treatment. I want this cut out and a handle probably similar to this, although I have some other ideas on that. Probably a rawhide collar. Trying to balance it a little bit more because it's it has a very poor balance. Um, this one's not so great either, but I think it's a little better. So that's one project. And all I did for that project was carve this handle blank, which is very well seasoned now. It must be over a year. Maybe it's two years. I don't even know how time flies. You know, I got that video done at least of like chopping this out because that's an important step. I want that really well seasoned. I might work on this and play with this. I'm kind of curious about it. It's a Grand Spores um, about maybe going on 20 years ago. 
my ex-wife and I bought a couple of axes and hatchets. This is actually hers, um, although I've lost it twice. <laughs> I lost it maybe six years ago or something and uh, Zach was out hiking around the place and he found it under an olive tree where it had been left and again before that I had lost it for a couple years like at least a year in another spot and uh, I'd like to get this sharpened up and rehandled actually I might even just leave this handle on it and just dress it up a little bit and this is probably locust which is very very rot resistant um, so it could easily survive six years in the field, and that's that's probably what that is. In fact, one of my other axes, uh, little hatchets, was lost in a field for a full year. Um, it has a locust handle, and it still has that same handle. So I won't do that until, unless it's really quick, like a one video project, I won't do that until I get some of this other stuff done. This was the cheese glue and cloth mummy wrap i just have not used this that much i haven't had a lot of opportunity or need to use it this head is a little bit lighter than my other boys axe heads it's probably bar barely over two pounds and the other ones are probably like two and a quarter so i don't grab this to go chop firewood or anything so for me to use it enough to really test this it uh, honestly it's just not going to happen um, what i might do is give this axe to someone else and just just give it away as a gift and to a novice <laughs> and let them beat it up because i don't you know if i'm out shopping like i just don't i don't miss that much you know i don't i don't hit the handle very often it does happen um but it's it's not that common so if, even if i put this to a lot of use it's unlikely that i'm really going to test this thoroughly if uh, someone was splitting wood with it now that would be the ticket this was a video i did on just wrapping this area with sinew and hide glue just to see how tough that would be on its own because i've been i haven't been using it much i've been using my small axis to split wood but uh i did a class on wood splitting and i used this and as soon as i smacked it once hard on a sharp piece of wood it just started coming apart so sinew i'd say is a fail um not really necessary anyway if you use rawhide now this has held up very well i've smacked it um at least once or twice you know not super hard again you know if i'm not splitting a ton of rounds especially like saw cut rounds which are actually harder on on this then i'm not likely to beat this up too much so i haven't really tested it thoroughly but you know i think that this cowhide wrap is pretty awesome and what it really needs to happen is it needs to get on a full-size axe with someone who splits a lot of wood, like sawn rounds of firewood, and see how well it holds up then. Because it's pretty hard to do that without making any mistakes and bashing your handle once in a while. If you're working like you mean it, and you're, you're trying to get work done, and you're not pussyfooting around, you know, saving your axe, which I think is ideal for, you know, an actual splitting axe. Now, like this axe... When I'm splitting wood, I'm careful because it's my chopping axe, and I can split a pile of wood, and often the the bit will hardly be any duller than when I started. But I'm it costs me, you know, that costs me time and effort to keep that edge intact. Whereas if I just had this kind of beater <clears throat> splitting axe with a rawhide wrap, and I was just going to town, bucking Billy Ray Smith style, boom, that's a way to test that. Anyway, let's talk about this axe next. Now this axe um, is the original council tool, two and a quarter pound boys axe that I got. Um, I like it. Uh, it's been a great little axe. Uh, I think they're, you know, for a pole axe, they're reasonably well balanced. My handle turned out great. From what I've seen myself and seen from other people that bought them and what they've told me i'd say there's at least a 50 percent chance that you're going to get a really nice handle probably most of the others will be usable and then there's going to be some lemons there's just going to be some lemons in there so if you have to order it as usual it's going to be kind of a crapshoot my overall impression of this axe is it's very fun if you get a good one it's very serviceable very functional you can do a ton of work with it and it's cheap it can go as low as um, you know under thirty dollars, like twenty-seven dollars shipped to your door from Amazon. I've heard of people getting them even cheaper. You might check uh, Bailey's, but the prices fluctuate all the time. I just looked and they were like thirty-four bucks all the time. They're just changing all the time. So just keep an eye out, keep checking, and one day they're just going to drop for some reason, and you can snag one. This axe is toast. Um, 
I, a long time ago, I torqued the handle sideways and cracked it, and then I kind of jumped it on further and re-wedged it and made it work. If I gave this to a novice, they would just, they would just waste this handle immediately. You know, I was able to use it for a long time because I have a pretty light-handed technique, and I'm not, you know, I'm not bashing the thing around. It's just gone. Like, if I carved this away and jumped it on a little further, I could probably get more life out of it, but I'm not. I'm going to retire it, and I'm going to actually auction this off as a piece of skill cult history because this axe has been in so many different videos it was in that whole series about doing this rawhide collar and i just i just don't need it and but at the same time i don't want to take the handle off and toss it and then i'll just have this head lying around which i don't need some kind of sentimental value but for me it's like i don't i don't need this you know hanging around it's just not that's not me you guys bid on it if you want, but it can you can replace the handle if you want. I mean, you could. If you do, you probably should put it on a better head than this, like an old vintage boy's axe head that you could probably get for like 20 bucks or something. When this video comes out, this will be on, on eBay. Speaking of those, I picked one day when these were super cheap on um, Amazon, I thought of yet another axe project <laughs> to distract me from the ones I've already started, which was to get several of these and grind them in different ways. So I have a direct comparison with the exact same ax, same handle, same head weight, same you know initial design, head design to compare those and just be in the field like being like, okay, I'm using this you know, for a few notches and then I'm using this for a few notches, just like A, B, head to head, right together. Because for me to take the experience I have say with that ax and then now start over this next season with a new axe that's maybe ground a little bit different and look back and say, oh, you know, like what's the comparison? You know, it changes with every log. So I just want, for me, to be serious about that, I need those things like in hand together. So that's the plan is, I, I don't actually have planned exactly how I want the different grinds. I think, well, I think I may actually. And I also have this, which is the Forest Service version of that. Axe. And this was sent to me by a viewer, Brian Gordon, and as a gift. And thank you very much. That was awfully generous of him. And uh, he's just, you know, he's just trying to help me out with uh, stuff to review because reviews get me a lot of views and it pulls a lot of people in. And I don't really do that many, and I'm not actually crazy about doing them all the time. But um, I did want to review this, and he knew that because. This is supposed to be one grade up from this, but it's essentially, in all other ways, it's basically the same, you know, it's the, it's the same design. I, I don't see any physical real differences. So we're gonna look at the actual differences of those. And of course, I'm gonna actually end up using this. And this may very well become my next basic working ax, although I kind of want to move up in weight and possibly length a little bit, but whatever. We'll try to put it to some good use and um, compare the differences and it's gonna need probably a little bit of work. We'll look at that soon. Let's just leave these here because they look good. <laughs> Here's the wedge ax that I did and the reason I never got back to this and started using it is because the handle tweaked out. Now this is one of five handles I got from House Handle Company. Um, here's another one that you can probably obviously see is not, not straight. And out of those, one was usable. This one I thought I could reshape, um, but as soon as I reshaped it, it warped again. But the one good thing I can say is that they refunded my order in full with shipping. So I, can't, I can hardly complain about that. But the truth is, if you read the comments in my review video, a lot of people have had the exact same experience I've had. Somebody is trying to do something about that. Adam West uh, has started a small enterprise making axe handles. This is one that he sent me and uh, I'm real hesitant to accept any kind of review items from people uh, for free and I pretty much have a policy not to so I was like okay well send me one and we'll put a head on it and I'll, I'll give it away as to you guys as a giveaway because I do want to get him some exposure and publicity for this project because he's doing what needs to be done. He's an axe guy with opinions about what an axe handle should be 
and he's doing something about it. Uh, he's on eBay as Adams, sorry, um, West's Woods. So uh, check him out. They're made from air dried hickory. Uh, he has, you know, someone else makes them for him, and uh, we'll be hopefully soon. I'll get that hafted up, and we'll just uh, we'll do some kind of giveaway on the channel for for that. And this is the Husqvarna 26 inch forest axe, like multi-purpose forest axe. Um, it seems to me like it has a lot of potential. There's some things I want to change. I'm going to change the bit a little bit. I've already worked on it some, like I think three, I'm three videos in. Uh, the handle needs a lot of wood removal. Not too big of a deal. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly everything I'm gonna do with this, but I got a pretty good idea. We'll get to this. I'm gonna try to do this pretty soon because I know there's a lot of people, people keep asking me about it. And, and uh, yeah, again, my apologies for dropping the ball and that. It's just once the cordwood challenge started, I had to, be thinking about other axe things especially you know larger axes like i could do the cordwood challenge with this there's no doubt i could do it but i don't really want to you know i want a little bit heavier axe i really want a heavier axe than this you know which is what i used last year although not necessarily by much and that's perfectly competent too same thing um I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about getting something closer to ideal. And I, I don't use it, you know. But in fact, the head isn't even wedged. Other axe projects, there's, I have a huge list of stuff. I mean, it's, I got some really great ideas. But I need the time and energy and focus to pull them off the way that I want to. For instance, there was one I started that was uh, the factors of, you know, factors involved in good axemanship, it was uh, S-T-A-T-E. You know, I have a fairly good idea of what I want to do with that project, but there's other projects on the side, that will, and a lot of these will overlap the same content, but they'll be focused on different things like bucking notches or axe handle breakage and cutting yourself and stuff like that. I really feel like I need to prioritize some of the axe use and safety stuff for the cordwood challenge this year because i would like to you know get out and pull in more people for that this year even with the number we had you know it's just we actually had one axe pretty good axe cut you know nothing permanent or that serious but some stitches and it was an ugly ugly looking thing i'll put up a picture for you right here important yeah it's just even with instruction like from a video it's just it's so unfamiliar to people and they just don't understand what can go wrong, you know, and, and how serious it can be. So I feel like I need to prioritize some of that content. And honestly, that stuff's more important than all these axe projects and, you know, modification and stuff like that. Who cares what you have in your hand if you can't use it or, and use it safely? So those priorities are all going to be fighting against each other and uh, plus the new ones that I come up with <laughs> which there will be I'm sure that's it I think for those and um, I'm gonna keep chopping away and I've learned so much in the last two years I really have excel accelerated my axe skills and my understanding and my questions you know that's important too it's like the more you know the dumber you are my friend Jim Riggs who just passed away last week used to say that that's one of his gymisms um, the more you know the dumber you are and coming up with more questions and knowing what questions to ask I keep having camera problems anyway yeah Jim Riggs always said the more you know the dumber you are and he was right it, you know what questions to ask and uh, Jim I, I tried a couple times to stand here and do like a eulogy for Jim Riggs and tell people who he was like, I don't know, there's so many people whose lives are affected by who Jim was and what he did with his life, including you if you're watching me, the way I think, you know, the stuff I know. With, you know that I got from Jim or from some one of his other students that passed it down to me and I don't know it just hasn't worked out right there's always been something going wrong uh, wind noise maybe it's Jim being like it's like don't do that I don't want to be on the internet <laughs> I don't think he liked the internet he never got a computer he never got a cell phone as far as I know and uh, yeah Jim Riggs um, 
it just the you know I understand that people die and their teachers before them died and I I you know kind of know who they were but I never met his his really important teachers like the level of importance that he was to me I recognize that those people had teachers before them that died and went into obscurity and this is just where we this is what happens you know that's just how it is but at the same time something in me just wants to be like dude you know it was Jim Riggs Jim Riggs you know it wasn't just anybody and if you you know if you learn anything about handrail fire making brain tanned buckskin cordage and numerous other things that I probably don't even know came from him ow I heard it too like buzzing you know like zzz, bam yeah if you learn anything about those things for me that's like Jim's legacy you know that's that's his legacy and it wasn't just that he knew how to do that stuff it was his attitude and his lifestyle and his relentless unapologetic Jimness. you know Jim was Jim and deal with it <laughs> sometimes for better sometimes for worse but Jim had clout you know he had substance in that and, and knowledge and wisdom and that gave him clout to be Jim and maybe I'll still try to do that but it's just gonna be a long rambling thing that most people are just gonna be like well I don't know this guy you know that's how I feel like if, if you told me about somebody pretty much but I think the important part to me is to point out that there's a legacy that that has been, that has come down through me and this now I can transmit to to you guys and whoever that was it's there because Jim Riggs you know like did something different and and lived differently and pursued things that are different from what most people do okay um, I'll see you soon and somewhere doing something